Hello, everyone. It's Jerry Durano Clark, clubrhino.com, welcoming you to another issue of Power Tips, your regular dose of energy and power. And in this issue, we're going to share with you some information from a giant that we're standing on his shoulders. This is an individual whose story was absolutely compelling to me when I first heard it. Because as you all know, in the land of network marketing, there's a lot of people to get in, a lot of people to get started, and a lot of people really do not go through the journey to the point to where they get to where they want to go. And this individual, he was one of those people. He got started in the business about seven or so years ago. He went through a journey. It wasn't working. He was not getting what he wanted. But something happened. This is like a magical thing that just occurred after maybe four years of struggle. And all of a sudden, things start to go for him. And today, from two and a half years ago, really, to today, the transformation is absolutely powerful. He was absolutely uh, broke. I mean, he was living with his father two and a half years ago, sleeping on a twin bed, <laughs> and just didn't have any money. And today, money is not a problem. Generating multiple six figures every single month, multiple seven figures per year. And you're going to get a chance to hear a little bit more about his story. I wanted to make sure that he shared this information on how he did this and some of the concepts that allow him to be able to pull it off. And so without any further ado, I want to introduce you to David Imonitier. Uh, David, welcome to the program. Oh, I appreciate you, Jerry. Appreciate you having me on. Uh, definitely excited to be on here and, and talking with you. And uh, you know, after so many years of actually hearing some of your, your audios, it's, uh, it's a pleasure to actually be sitting with you right now. Awesome, awesome. So you know, we want to know in regards to, I mean, this is uh, pretty interesting when I first heard about your story and first heard about what you have done in the last just two and a half years. I mean, being able to go from broke to being able to create multiple six figures a month in the industry of network marketing. So give us a little bit about your journey. Tell us a little bit about this background and how things kind of got to the point to where they are now. Well, man, it's 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 been an incredible journey. You know, I was you know going back to... Uh, you know, the very beginning, you know, I was born at a very young age and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, mom told me to do all the things that, um, you know, I'm sure your mom and other moms tell us, you know, go to school and get your grades and graduate and all that good stuff. And, and I tried that, you know, I went to, you know, started off in kindergarten. I was at the top of my class, uh, in kindergarten and, uh, <laughs> went on to first grade, all that good stuff, graduate from high school. My mom always told me go to college. I was there for four years. And after four years, I graduated as a sophomore. You graduated as a sophomore after yeah, four as years? A, as a sophomore. <laughs> <laughs> I had uh, 32 credits, 32 credits wow. uh, after four years of schooling. So needless to say, I didn't go to class, but uh, that, wasn't, that wasn't my path. And got out of college and um, got introduced to this industry of network marketing at the age of 21 and uh, didn't have any success. I was in that company for two years and struggled mightily uh, for two years. But I learned a lot, learned a lot, met some good people. And I uh, got out of networking for about six months. I was actually coaching tennis with my dad. I was living with my dad at that time and, um, you know, got into, reintroduced to the industry. The juices started flowing again, got involved in another company and failed in that company. I mean, two, two years and four months in that company. But guess what? Learned some more. And I got a chance to meet a mentor of mine, Mr. Holton Bucks. I got a chance to meet him. And uh, just I met him back in 2007. And that was really where the magic really started to happen, because now I could actually have a clear picture of what could possibly happen with this industry of network marketing. And uh, to look up what's happened two and a half years uh, you know, ago, living with my father on a twin size bed, having a thousand dollars to my name two and a half years ago now to become a multimillionaire here with this opportunity. It's just been incredible. Mm. Now, one of the things that you just mentioned is that, you know, when you first got into the industry, you were struggling and so forth. You know, what was it about the industry that got you excited in the first place? I mean, what made you say, you know what, I'm going to do that. I really want to do that. And then as you were thinking about getting started in the industry, did you think it was going to be a lot easier than what it ended up being for those first four or five years? Well, a couple of things, Jerry. Really, it was it, I really didn't have a choice. I didn't have a choice, but to make it work. But I love the concept. I love the concept of really being able to help people get what they want out of life. I love the concept of being able to show people that hey, listen, it doesn't matter your background, it doesn't matter where you're from, it doesn't matter your race, your creed, anything like that. You can actually get involved in something, start it from scratch, 
and actually work your way all the way to the top. And, you know, corporate America really doesn't allow you to do that. You know, if you're going to get to the top, it's going to take you 20, 30 years. But I read in, um, in a book, my first year of network marketing, I read in that book, it said if you survive the industry of network marketing 10 years, you'll be wealthy beyond your wildest imagination. I said, well, survive. I said, okay, well, that sounds like it's going to be a fight. Hmm. So, uh, so hmm. I said, okay, well, let me get ready for the fight. And uh, for me, it took me four and a half years to find that breakthrough. And uh, once we found it now, it's all about helping other people understand that there is a process that they're going to have to go through uh, and grow through that's going to allow them to get to where it is that they want to go. So we're excited about uh, what's happened, but we're even more excited about what's about to take place. Mm. Now, going back to that four and a half years where you were going through a process, things weren't really happening for you. You know, there's a lot of people listening who are in their process right now. Things are not happening for them right now. What allowed you to keep pressing forward, I mean, to to stay in the game, to move forward, even though things weren't happening for you? Well, a couple of things. One of the things that I always teach people right now is that you've got to begin with the end in mind. So I had a clear picture of what the end result already looked like. So it didn't matter all the things that I had to go through. I remember, you know, driving from here to to, from Houston to to Baton Rouge, a five hour ride. And not even having a hotel room, having to sleep in my car after doing a meeting, after talking to a couple hundred people about that opportunity, them dropping me back off at the hotel and them saying bye to me at the lobby. And, you know, as soon as they drove off, I would go back in my car and sleep in my car multiple times. But it was only because I had a clear picture of what the end result was going to look like. I was already here in my mind. I already saw myself as a multimillionaire. I already saw myself with with all the things that are happening today. I saw it back then. You know, when you look at that word S-A-W, I saw it. Basically, you take that backwards, W-A-S. I was already there. I was already living that type of lifestyle in my mind. It was just waiting for the physical equivalent to actually take place. Hmm. That's very interesting. So how would you share with other people uh, the way that they can actually see the future before it happens? Uh, uh, I mean, was there a book that you read? Was there a process you went through? Or did you just say, you know what, I'm going to be successful, and here's what successful you know, meant to you? Or tell us a little bit about that. Well, obviously, you got to be in the right environment. You know, I was in the right environment. Even though I failed in those companies, I was around other people that were successful. Uh, you know, people like Emmanuel Bernstein was one of my very first mentors. I got a chance to meet him. I was 21 years old, and at that time, he was earning a multiple a five-figure a month income. So I had a clear picture, uh, once again, of really what it could look like, you know, at the end result of it. And, um, when, you know, when you have the right environment, you have the right people around you, making sure that you're listening to the right information. I mean, your information, I grew up on your information, listening to people like Tony Robbins, listen to people like, uh, 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 you know, uh, like yourself and, and so many other leaders, Les Brown, listening to that information. One of the books that very first book that I ever read was uh, Think and Grow Rich, you know, by Napoleon Hill, reading mm-hmm. that book and understanding that thoughts are things. And I said, okay, well, if I want to change the things in my life, I'm going to change the thoughts in my life. And I really started to study that, started to really listen a whole lot more, read a whole lot more. And uh, I think all the information that I actually listened to is what allowed me to actually be here today. Hmm. You know, and that's a common trend that I have heard from every leader that I've ever talked to in this industry is that, you know, number one, they do see it in the very beginning before they even start. I like that, you know, saw, you know, I was it, you know, I like that. That's really powerful. And the interesting thing is that you actually did something that Jim Rohn teaches. And he says that whenever things are not going well or you're not where you want to be, you can borrow from the vision of the future or borrow from the promise of the future, mm. which will allow you to engage in the activities today. Absolutely. So, so when things weren't going well for you, but you saw this future that you saw, did that empower you? Is that something you actually used Absolutely. It was, it's a formula that, uh, that I actually came up with here. We talk about desire plus skills times faith equals success. Hmm. You know, you, you got to have that burn desire. I believe that's the, really the beginning. That's the genesis of everything that we're going to talk about and everything that you're going to do is going to be how, 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 what is your burning desire? What's your, what's your magnificent uh, uh, obsession that you have? And then now you got to add the skills. So those four and a half years of being in those companies, all I was doing was just adding the skills of knowing how to you know, interact with people, knowing how to give a presentation, knowing how to prospect, knowing how to do all the things that are necessary for you to become successful in this industry. So giving myself time 
you know, to really understand. Because most people want to get in and they want to make a million dollars the next day. Well, it doesn't work like that. You've got the desire to make a million dollars. That's great. But now let's add the skills of a millionaire. Hmm. Okay, hmm. and then times that by faith. Well, faith comes by hearing. So the more times that I heard it over and over and over again, kept saying it to myself. That auto suggestion, saying it to myself over and over and over again, repeating it, having it on index cards, having it on signs everywhere where I could actually see the end result, and then that led to the success that we've had today. But now you got to continue it, even hmm. after becoming. Uh, a multimillionaire, even after a little bit of success, maybe you start earning ten thousand a month or twenty thousand a month. You better stay on that path of desire plus skills times faith equals the success that you're looking for. Hmm. Now, when it comes to the skill part, okay, I would assume that everyone who's listening to this information right now, they probably got the desire, or else they probably wouldn't be listening. But you know, once you once again, you said that magnificent obsession. You know, speaking in the language of Napoleon Hill and mm-hmm, W. Mm-hmm. Clement Stone, that's right, that's right. what they talk about. And so, so let's say that someone is really hungry. Let's Les Brown say they really want to make this happen in a big way, deep down inside. And so now it comes time for the skills. So let's say a person starts learning the skills that's going to be required, and you know, some of the things they got to learn how to attract people to their reality, to learn how to convert. Once they attract these people to their reality, they, they want to learn how to retain people once they kind of get them started and they want to learn how to develop leaders and all mm-hmm. these different type of skills. So when you were actually engaging in the skills, did you know, did you set yourself up to where you were doing the skills but weren't producing the results and you were questioning whether or not these skills work or tell us how, what you were I, thinking? I, I never questioned. I never, ever doubted that it was going to work because I could see that it mm-hmm. worked. Uh, There was clear evidence around me that it was working. I just knew that it would work in time for me. Mm. And that's the key thing that everybody's got to understand, that it it does work uh, in time. But you've got to be persistent. You've got to be consistent with everything that you're doing and understand that the end result is going to take place. It has no choice but to happen. Mm. But most people quit before it actually gets there. Mm. You know, so persistence, you know, persistence is really the seed for faith. If I know that it's going to happen and I believe it's going to happen, then I'll continue to go down that path. I'll continue to do whatever it is that I have to do, whatever it is I have to learn. But now the mentoring part of it, too, you know, having a coach, having somebody that you can actually call on, having somebody that you can actually watch. You know, I learned something from um, uh, Jeff uh, Jeff Olson uh, talking about four different types of knowledges, Hmm. you know, learning knowledge, you know, learn knowledge. I'm going to learn it. Okay, then I've got activity knowledge. So now I've got to go do the activity. Mm. And that's really where most people fail. Right. They'll sit in the class, they'll learn it, they'll be excited, pumped up, ready to go. But now when it's time to go meet that person or go do a presentation, say, no, I don't want to do that. No, you've got to fail forward. You've got to go and do the activity. And that's really where the knowledge is going to come in. But then now modeling knowledge. Mm. You know, that's what happened for me when I met uh, my coach and my mentor today was that now I modeled him. And most times people hear me on a conference call and say, man, you sound just like him. Or maybe they hear me speak and say, man, you sound just like him. <laughs> and they think that's on accident. No, it was on purpose. Mm. Well, he has what it is that I want. But see, a lot of people don't have that because, you know, humility, the humility humility factor. Humility is not a personality trait. It's mm. just recognizing you don't have something. <laughs> See, two and a half years ago, I recognized I didn't have the Bentley. <laughs> I recognized I didn't have the million dollar home. I recognized I didn't have millions of dollars in the bank. So I was humble enough to follow somebody that had it. 